Hey guys, welcome back again to the channel and to a new video. Today we are going to look at Samba. We are going to configure a Samba server and then we are going to see how we can connect to the server through a Samba client. This is all done on Arch Linux. So let's get going. So let's get started here and install Samba on our server. So again, as I did for NFS, we are going to have here two machines. One is the Samba server and the other one is the Samba client. And in this section, I'm going to configure first the Samba server. So let's open up here our terminal because most of the work is done in there. Let me go here full screen and increase the font size. You can see this is the Samba server as it says here in the host name. So what we're going to do right now is to install the package we need, which is Samba. So let's type in sudo pacman-s and the package is Samba. And then we can hit enter. Enter our sudo password and proceed with the installation, which is going to take a second. There you go. So let's clean up the terminal. Now, we need to actually grab the Samba configuration file from the Git repository because the Samba package doesn't come with one. So let me close the terminal here very quickly. And I'll go here to Firefox and we'll open up shortly the Samba page for Arch Linux. So let's go to the website. And let me get rid of this here and go to the link and click on server. And as you can see here, because the Samba package does not provide the file, one needs to create it before starting the service. So let's do this. A documented example of the configuration file from the Samba Git repository may be used to set up the configuration file. So let's click this link. And what we need to do here, we need to basically copy the text. So let's hit Control A and Control C. Now let's open up our terminal again. And I'll go again full screen and increase the font size. I will navigate to the Etsy Samba directory. So let's type in cd slash Etsy slash Samba and hit enter. If we type in, in here ls, you will see we have one directory, but otherwise this directory is empty. So we need to create our smb.conf file. To do this, we can type in sudo vim smb.conf and hit enter. Enter our sudo password. And here we can basically now paste the content we copied from the Git repository. So let's enter insert mode and hit shift insert on the keyboard. And here we have our Samba configuration file. So let's go on the top of the file here with control B for backwards. And what I'm going to do first, I'm going to change the workgroup name. I'm going to change this to workgroup because this is a standard workgroup name also for Windows computers. So to make things easier, I'm going to change this to workgroup. And then we can move down at the end of the file with Control F for forward. And we can see what we have here. So we have here, for example, a template that we can use to create our share. So I move down here at the end of the file and I'm going to create a new share here in this configuration file. Now, this is just one example, of course, and it serves the purpose just to show you how you can do it. Then, of course, you can change the options as you see fit. Now, let's type in the square bracket and define the name of our share. So I will call this share just as an example, Samba share. And then I close the square brackets and move down to the next line. Now, the first thing I'm going to do is to insert a comment. So I'll type in, in here comment equal and just a generic comment here. I will just type in my Samba share. This is optional, but I recommend you to do it, especially if you have several shares. In the next line, I'm going to insert the path of the share. So I'm going to type in here path equal and then the path I want to have. So in my case, I'm going to have it under slash Samba. And I'm going to create later this Samba directory in the system anyway. Then I'm going to move down here and I'm going to create also the writable option. So I'm going to type in here writable equal yes. And then move down to the next option, which is going to be browsable. So I'm going to type in here browsable equal yes. The next option is going to create the mask for the files created in this share. So I'm going to type in here create mask. And the mask is going to be 0700. And then move down to the next line. And I'm going to create also the directory masks. So I want to be sure basically that I can read and write on this directory. So I can type in directory mask equal 0700. And the next option I'm going to put in is read only equal no. 
And in the last parameter, I'm going to put in here guest OK equal no. This is not going to be a guest. You need to be registered as a user for this share. So this is going to do it for the share. So I can save the file and exit Vim here. And I'm going to go back to my home directory and clean up the terminal. Now I'm going to create a new group, which is called Samba users. To do this, I'm going to type in sudo group add dash r and then Samba users and hit enter. Now I'm going to add my user to this group. So to do this, I will type in sudo user mod dash a capital G Samba users and then the username, which is Hermano. Pay attention here that the A option basically means additional and the capital G is the supplementary group. So I do have already a supplementary group, which is the we group in my installation. And I'm going to add the Samba users group to my username and then I can hit enter. Now I did this because I want to use my username for the Samba share. If you want, you can also create an extra user for the Samba service as well. But in my case, I'm going to use my username, which is in the Linux system here. Now I need to give a password for this user for the Samba service. So to do this, I need to type in sudo smb passwd dash a and then the username. So in my case, it's my name and hit enter. Now you see, I can give the user a new Samba password, which has nothing to do with the Linux password. So I'll type in my password here, which is gonna be very simple. It's gonna be one, two, three, four, just for this example. And I'm gonna retype it. There you go. Now let's create the directory that we want to have for the share. You remember we added the directory in the share before it was slash Samba. So I'm gonna type in sudo mkdir slash Samba, any tensor. Now I'm going to change the ownership of this directory to the Samba user group. So I'm going to type in, in here sudo chon dash r. I want to make it recursive and then colon Samba users, which is the group I created before. And then the directory is slash Samba, any tensor. Now I'm going to change also the permissions on this directory. So I'm going to type in sudo chmod 1770 slash Samba and then I can hit enter. Now, this is basically done for the configuration. What we need to do now, we need to start the service. So to do this, we can type in sudo systemctl enable dash dash now smb and hit enter. And we're going to do the same also for the nmb service. So I'm just going to replace here smb with nmb and hit enter. There you go. So basically the Samba server is now up and running. What we are going to do now, we are going to connect with the client to this share and we are going to mount it and see if everything is working. And in the end, we are going to mount it persistently in the client. So let me switch over here to the client and I'll be back with you in a second. So here we are on the client. And before we get into the terminal and see everything what we need to do, let's check that we can connect to the Samba server correctly in the graphical environment here. So let's open up the file manager very quickly. And let's go here under other locations and type in here SMB colon slash slash. And then we need to know the IP of our server. So I don't know that. Let me go back to the server one more time. And I'll type in here IP space A. And you can see I have an IP ending with 1.4. So let me go back to the client one more time. And type in here 192.168.122.14. Slash and the share that we define in our Samba server, which was Samba share. And hit enter. Now we need to log in here as a registered user. So I'm going to click the second option here. The username is Hermano, and the password I have for the share on the server is 1234. And then I can hit enter. And as you can see, I can log in fine. So let's try to create something in here. Let's right click on the folder here and click new folder. I'm going to test this out, so I'll type in test1 and hit enter. And you can see we can write fine here on the share. So everything is working fine. So let me delete this and click delete and I will unmount the share. So let's go now into the terminal. Let me pull it up very quickly here and go full screen and increase the font size. 
Now, what we want to do here, we want to basically mount our Samba share in a directory here in our client and then eventually make it persistent so that when we boot the machine, we have the Samba share always available to us. I don't want to log in manually every time I boot up my machine. The first thing we need to do is to create actually a directory for the share where we want to mount it. So I'm going to create a directory here in my home directory. So I'll type in, in here mkdir and I'm going to call the directory server and hit enter. So if I type in now ls-l, you can see I have here my server directory. So let's clean this up and let's mount now our share into this server directory. Now let's type in sudo mount-t for type. The type is CIFS, which is the file system type for Samba shares. And then slash slash the IP of the server, which is 192.168.122.14. Slash Samba share, which is the name of the Samba share I have on my server. And then we define the directory where we want to mount this, which is the absolute path is slash home slash hermano slash server. And I'm going to add also some options here. So I'm going to add dash O for options. And the username is hermano, comma, the password equal 1234, the very secure password. And let's hit enter here and see what happens. So I need to enter the password here for the sudo user. And you can see we have no errors. That means the directory should be actually mounted correctly. So let's go into the server directory and type in ls. Okay, so there is nothing in here. So let's try to create a file in here. Let's type in touch file1.txt and hit enter. So what happens here is that we have a permission denied. How can we correct this? Well, there is a small trick to correct this. Let's go back to the home directory and unmount our server directory first. So let's type in sudo umount and then server and hit enter. Now let's pull up the command where we mounted the directory first, which is this one. What we need to do here, we need to add three parameters. One is the UID of the user. So let's go back shortly to the client and let's type in here ID. You can see my UID on the server is a thousand and the GID is also a thousand. And then I have also the wheel group here. But what I'm interested in is the UID, the GID and also the workgroup name. So let's go back here to the client and I'm going to add in here UID equal 1000 gid equal 1000 and the workgroup equal workgroup because you remember we changed the name here in the configuration file on the server then let's hit again enter and let's go into our server directory let's try again to create something in here let's type in touch file1.txt and hit enter and you can see it's working fine now so let's type in ls and we have our file onetxt So to check this out, we can go to the server one more time and let's type in su and then the dash to go into the root shell. And now let's type in cd and then slash samba and hit enter. Type in ls and we have our file onetxt So the synchronization is working fine. Okay, so this is done. Let's go back to our client. And what we need to do now is to actually mount this permanently so that when we boot the machine, the share is always available to us. So let me clean up the terminal and go back to the home directory. And let's unmount our server directory by typing in sudo umount and then server and hit enter. And to create the permanent mount, we need to edit the fstab file. So for editing the fstab file, we need sudo privileges. So we can type in sudo vim slash etsy slash fstab and let's go down here at the end of the line and let's create a new one and we're going to type in here slash slash and then the ip of the server which is 192.168.122.14 slash samba share which is again the name of the share and we're going to define here the mount point which is under my home directory in the client so it's slash home slash hermano slash server tab and then we specify the file system type is cifs and the options are going to be underscore netdev which is going to mount the volume only if network is available 
and also username equal hermano in my case and then password equal one two three four and i'm going to enter also the other options here which are uid equal 1000 gid equal 1000 and also work group equal work group and then a tab again and we define the last two options for the file system checks so zero and zero now this is not the most elegant way of defining these options especially here in the fs tab file because it exposes your username and the password for the samba share you could also create a file in your home directory with all these credentials make it readable and substitute basically these options with the path to the credentials but for the sake of this tutorial this is going to be fine and we can save the file and exit vim now we can try to mount everything by typing in sudo mount dash a. We have no errors here, so we should be able now to have our server directory with our file in there. So let's type in cd server and type in ls and we have our file. So everything is working fine. Now to verify that this is functioning also when we reboot the machine, let's type in reboot and hit enter. It's going to take a moment here to boot up. Let's start Arch Linux, enter my password. And let's open up here the file browser and let's go under other locations and let's go here under server, which is here. And there you go. We have our file. So what we can do now, we can also eventually go to the home directory and drag the server directory here as a new bookmark. And we can rename it to whatever we want to, like, for example, data. And we have always access to it here. You can see we have also access here above. And we can create here a new folder or a new file, or we can edit also files. So this is how you can create a Samba server and access it through a Samba client from another computer. If you try this out, let me know in the comments below how it's working for you. And if you have any other question, let me know also in the comments below. I will try to answer you as soon as I can. So there you go. This is how you can configure a Samba server and connect to it through a client on Arch Linux. This is just, of course, one example. There are many other ways on how we can do this. If you try this out, let me know in the comments below how it worked for you. And I hope you liked this video, guys. If you did, please hit the thumbs up and subs to the channel if you haven't already. Subs always helps us out. And if you want to support the channel, you can do so by visiting our Patreon website or you can donate via PayPal to our website as well. Thank you so much for watching the video, guys, and I'll see you very soon in the next one.